Uh, hello everybody, this is Chris with the Ancient Scholar. So today uh, we are actually going to be in the last week of the, uh, the lab exercises that I'm doing over the summer before the uh, students transition into, uh, well they actually take their, their final exams next week and then they transition into the clinical environment and uh, so the, the, this week is actually dedicated to graphics and I do have some other videos on graphics that I will link to this uh, playlist. Uh, where I'm putting all these other videos so you guys will have a look at them. But what I wanted to do is I just wanted to review uh, ventilator graphics. And we'll just kind of start at the basic um, components of graphics. So here I have ventilator graphics. So there are two, two categories of ventilator graphics. There's something known as a scalar and then something known as a loop. There are three different types of scalars. There's a pressure time scalar, a flow time scalar, and a volume time scalar. There are two types of loops. There's a flow volume loop and a pressure volume loop. So when we look at the basic setup of a scalar, uh, we'll start over here on scalars. I have an X and an Y axis that I'm going to look at. X uh, being horizontal and Y being vertical. The X axis will always be time. So you can think of this as zero time to the left and then time progresses to the right and then generally this will be in seconds or a fraction of a second as the case may be so time is going to progress like this now on the y axis uh, so if you can see on these scalars I have time time and time so every single scalar if it is a scalar uh, will be linear and it will include a component of time on the x-axis. So um, these all three are functions of time and it's very important to differentiate a scalar from a loop. Okay, so x-axis I have my time, y-axis will be measuring either pressure, flow, or volume. And when I look at the uh, scalar, what will happen is I'll have some point and that point is the what we call the baseline. So I've just kind of uh, drawn it here and it's called the baseline. And this is where we have zero. Zero is at the baseline. It could be zero pressure, zero flow, or zero volume. Now if I go above the ba baseline that is going to be positive number. And if I go below the baseline that will be a negative number. Generally what this denotes is above the baseline is looking at inspiration, looking at inspiration, and below the baseline I'm looking at exhalation. So for example, if I look at my flow time, if I were to look at a flow time scalar, um, zero flow would be literally that, no flow in or out of the lungs. And then if, my, if I saw the graphic go above the baseline, something like this, that would indicate inspiration as gas, as a positive number, is flowing into the lung. And then if it goes below the baseline and you see something that looks like this, this indicates flow, because I'm talking about flow here, flowing out of the lungs during exhalation, and then I inhale and I exhale, and so on and so forth. That's just one example. And again, I just want to get you guys a, a, a basic appreciation for really what we're looking at uh, with these, uh, with these uh, graphics. So that's the basic anatomy of a scalar. And again, it could be pressure, flow, or volume. All three are going to be functions of time. And that is to say, as time progresses, these uh, scalars will change. And, and, and that should be fairly obvious or fairly intuitive that as time changes, I'm going to be inhaling and exhaling and I'm going to see the change in pressure, flow, or volume as I inhale and exhale, and of course that is going to be change over time. Okay, so these are fairly intuitive, fairly easy to identify. If we move over here to loops, the loops are much less intuitive because, um, I, have, because I do have an x-axis here, so I have horizontal and I have a y-axis. I have a vertical, but the, these are not functions of time. 
per se, not functions of time. And that is to say that there is no time component in a loop. Now, time is certainly um, going on, and something is happening over time, but these loops are not looking at time. What they do is they either compare flow and volume and pressure and volume. So basically what a loop does is it tells me what kind of flow is associated with what kind of volume. What kind of pressure is associated with what kind of volume. So here I have just, a, just an example. Again, we're just talking about the anatomy of graphics. I have a... Um, <clears throat> excuse me, a pressure volume loop. So on the x-axis here, I have PAW, or pressure. So you can assume that this is zero here, and then as the x-axis moves to the right, I'm going to have an increase in whatever I'm looking at. In this case, it's pressure, so it's going to increase. Now here, I have volume on my y-axis, and again, we can assume that this point here is zero, and as the y-axis increases, I'm going to have an increase. I'm going to have an increase in whatever I'm looking at. In this case, it's going to be volume. So, as the pressure, since we're looking at pressure volume, as I move to the right, my pressure will increase. So I'm just going to throw in some arbitrary numbers. We'll say this is 5, 10, 15, 20, okay? Pressure is increasing this way, and as I my y-axis goes up, my y value, in this case will be volume, is going to increase. And we'll say this is 0 0.1 liters, 0 0.2 liters, 0 0.3 liters, 0 0.4 liters, 0 0.5 liters, uh, 0 0.6 liters. It'll look like something like that. So if I look at the, again, the, this is the pressure volume, if I look at the tip here, that goes to 15 and 0 0.5. So that's the maximum, and in the case of this, that would be what we call the PIP, the peak inspiratory pressure, and that tells me that at 15 centimeters of water pressure, I have 0 0.5 liters or 500 milliliters of volume. And this is handy because during both the inspiratory phase, down here is inhaling, down is inhaling, and then up is exhaling. I can say, okay, at 5, I have 0.1 liters, at 10, I have 0.3 liters, and 15.5 liters. And it's very handy for me to compare um, what kind of volume is associated with what kind of pressure, or what kind of flow is associated with what kind of volume if I'm looking at a flow volume loop. Okay, guys, so this is just the basic anatomy of graphics. I'm not talking about how to interpret them. I just want to get everybody familiar on the same page with what we're actually looking at, what the anatomy is, what the difference between a scalar and a loop is. Okay, guys, hopefully you found that uh, fairly intuitive, and that may have cleared up any questions. Uh, we'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.